But again, anybody been in any mess? Yes. I want to talk about one messed up day. One messed up day. I'm going to take you back to about one minute. Got more than one. Let's go back to the book of Genesis. Amen? Bring it up for me. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. And I want to give uh, God praise for Elijah and Brother George back there. Amen. Genesis chapter 3. Uh, it's Isaiah. Isaiah later. We're going to do Isaiah later, but Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. I'm going to read it from here. Y'all read, read it with me. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. He said unto the woman, Yea, has God said you should not eat of every tree of the garden? Next verse. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the middle, midst of the garden, God has said you should not eat of it, neither should you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you should not surely die. For God knows that in the, in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Last verse. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took other fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. One messed up day. Church, we are living in a messed up world. and It appears to be getting messy and messier as time goes and that season change. Don't you agree? Amen. Society is all messed up. Schools are all messed up. Homes and families are messed up. Sexes and genders are messed up. You can't tell a boy from a girl these days. Amen? The economy and financial system is messed up. The White House has its share of mess. Even in the church house, there is mess. Amen? Some blame it on politics and politicians. Some blame it on race and racism. Some blame it on bad parenting or the lack thereof. Some blame it on the LGBTQ and their agenda. Some blame it on today's youth. Some blame it on different religions and their ideologies. Some even have the nerve, the audacity to blame it on the true and living God, the maker of heaven and earth. The God that created everything good is being blamed for man's mess. If you can say amen, say amen. Now I take it back to the beginning. Back to the beginning in Genesis 1 1, it says, In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God, a good God, a, a perfect God, a God with no imperfections. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. On day one, he just spoke. He spoke into nothing and made something. Call it ex nilo. Spoke into nothing and made something. He said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God separated the light from the darkness. And then it says in Genesis 1, 4, that God saw the light, that it was what? Say it with me. It was what? It was what? Good. And he divided the light from the darkness. Day two, God made the firmament and divided the water. The firmament was heaven and, and called the dry land earth. And it was what? Say it with me. It was what? Good. Day three, God said, let the earth bring forth grass, herb, and, and yielding seed and fruit, fruit trees yielding fruit after its kind. Who sees it in itself upon it upon the earth also, and it was what? Good. Day four, and God said, Let there be light in the firmament of, of the heavens, dividing the day, the day from the night. The day from the night, let it be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And God made two great lights, two great lights, a greater light for the day and a lesser light for the night. He also made the stars, and it was what? Good. And the day five, and God said, God created the whales and every living creature in, in the sea. And he said they brought, brought it forth abundantly after their kind. And he created all the birds after its kind. And he said let it be fruitful and multiply. And he said it was what? Good. Then day six, God made every beast, every beast of the field. He made the cattle. He made everything that's creeping up on the earth. And he saw that it was what? Good. And here it is. 
God said, come, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish, over the sea, over the fish of the sea, and the fowls of the air, over the cattle, and over every, every creeping thing up on the earth. So God created man in his image, in his likeness. Male and female created he him. And God blessed them, say, be fruitful and multiply, and gave them dominion. But verse 31 says, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was what? It was what? It was what? Very good. Amen. Very good. Very good. So how do we go? Of course, on the seventh day, God did what? Rested. So how do we go from everything being good and very good to everything being messed up and very messed up? How do we go from that? Sin. Sin. Romans 5. Romans 5 verse 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. But thank God for verse 17, chapter Romans 5, verse 17. For by one man offense reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace in the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, one Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody thank God for Jesus. See, in Genesis chapter 3, we have the great fall and depravity of man and mankind in creation. Here is the beginning of mess. Here is the root of mess. Here is the origin of mess right there in Genesis 3. Amen. Well, Adam, Adam brought us into a mess, not chaos. He brought us into a mess. See, because you, you can bring chaos into order. Amen. That's what God said when he said, let there be light. He brought chaos into order. He brought us into a mess. And you have to get rid of mess at its core. Oh, hear me now. You have to get, you have to destroy a mess at its root. Amen? Amen. Yes. Uh, let me give you an example of that. A riot is chaos, right? A riot is chaos, but it can be brought to order. But the heart of the messy rioter is still there, waiting for the next time to riot. Amen? Amen. You got to kill, you got to kill mess at its root. Amen? Amen? Adam didn't get us into trouble. He brought us into a mess. You see, you're going to have some trouble, but trouble don't last always, amen? But a mess can be a lifetime of misery, amen? Oh, hear me today. So what God created perfect and good in six days, man messes up in what? One day. In six days, good and perfect, but in one day, man messes up. Let me give you some things that would mess up your day. Can I do that? Here's the thing that messes up your day. A phone call in the middle of the night will mess up your day. One look in the wrong direction will mess up your day. Giving into lust and temptation will surely mess up your day. Disobedience to God's word and God's instruction will mess up your day. Ladies, and tell, tell, tell oh, wait, wait a minute. Let me go back. Telling your wife that that new dress she brought, man, this is for you. Telling your wife that that new dress she brought, that she brought in love is not working for her will mess up your day. Again, telling your wife that new dress she brought in love is not working for her will mess up your day. Now, don't laugh too much, white women, because telling your husband you paid too much for that dress that you brought and looked good in will mess up your day too. Amen? Amen. Bad choices will mess up your day. Trying to hide from God and trying to cover up your sin will mess up your day. Allowing other people mess to become your problem will mess up your day. In other words, sticking your nose in somebody else's business will mess up your day. Sweep around your own front door and let me sweep around mine. Amen? Mm. Let me give you some people that was, had a messed up day in the Bible. Of course, Adam and Eve had a messed up day. In fact, their mess of day turns into a mess for all the days. It's an epic mess up. It's a mess up of mess up. Amen? Job had a messed up day. You know the story. He, all in one day, he lost his house. He lost his family. He lost his cattle. He got sick. His wife turned on him. One messed up day through no fault of his own. Through no fault of his own. Moses had a messed up day. Moses. Of all the things that Moses did for the kingdom, he could not go in the promised land. Somebody say, that's messed up. Say, that's messed up. Of all the things Moses did, he could not go in the promised land. That's messed up. Amen. Joseph has a, bad, a messed up day. You know the story. You know the story. His brothers put him in the pit. He went to Paul's house. His wife, wife tried to take advantage of him. He thrown him into the prison. All of that through one messed up 
day. But your messed up day can be God's way of leading you to your destination and freedom and salvation for many. Amen. Your messed up day could be God's way to bring you to your glory. Amen. Samson had a messed up day. Samson, all of his strength, had his head in the liar's lap and thought he was going to the Philistine come up on him. He was going to jump up against the Philistine. But he did not know that the Spirit of the Lord had left him. He had a messed up day. Eyes got gouged out. Amen. David had a messed up day. David had a messed up day. David had a messed up day because satisfying himself with a few moments of lustful pleasure brought him to brokenness and repentance. Amen. Peter had a messed up day. Denying Christ. That was a messed up day for Peter. Peter, Jesus had a messed up night and day. Jesus had a messed up night and day, but leads to victory and triumph over sin and death. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. In other words, you can't get through this life on this earth without having some messed up days. Nobody can get through this life on earth without having some messed up days. But God can and will take your mess and messed up days and turn it around for a miracle and for his glory. Amen. I understand this, that a messed up day can be planned or unplanned. A messed up day can be planned or unplanned. Because someone always have a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life. A plan of good and not of evil. The devil has a plan for your life that will always lead to destruction. You have a plan for your life. Uncertain but hopeful. Amen. Other people have a plan for your life and who knows what it is. So your messed up day can be planned or unplanned. So I want to look at the life of two individuals and how their messed up days became victorious days for all of us. First, we're going to look at the first Adam, God's prized creation. Then we look at the second Adam, Jesus Christ, God's son, the savior of the world. What caused the messed up day, how to avoid a messed up day, and how to turn your messed up day into victorious days. Are you ready? Amen. So Genesis 3, verse 6 tells us what caused Adam's messed up day. So again, it's important to know your messed up day can be planned or unplanned. So who planned Adam messed up day? What caused Adam messed up day? The first thing is forgetting you have an adversary can cause your messed up day. Forgetting you have an adversary can cause your messed up day. Genesis 3 and 1 tells us. It tells us who caused Adam messed up day. It wasn't Eve. It was Satan using Eve. It was Satan using Eve that caused Adam messed up day. Don't let the devil use you to mess up somebody the other day. You got me? It's because Satan is the author and architect of messed up days. That's why 1 Peter 5 and 8 tells us be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walk about seeking who he may devour. Amen? Amen. And you being a believer in the true and living God, the Lord Jesus automatically puts you on the devil's radar. Amen? to try to mess up your day. In fact, he just don't want to mess up your day. John 10 to 10 say, what? The thief come but to what? Kill, steal, and destroy. He really want to kill you. So don't forget you have an adversary, amen? amen. You have an adversary. And he will use anything and anybody to accomplish that task to mess up your day. Amen. Second thing, not following God's instructions will cause you to have a messed up day. Not following God's word and instruction will cause you to have a messed up day. Because here's the deal. Eve probably never had a problem with the snake before. Amen? I'm sure she passed the snake and the other animals on a regular basis. Probably saying, how you doing, snake? How you doing, serpent? Because everything was what? Good. But this is probably the first time she actually had a conversation, you know, with, with the devil. Amen? With, 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 with the serpent. Because she and Adam both appeared to be comfortable around it. Remember, everything was good, was very good. So they didn't think they had an adversary. Evidently, God on no cool night, on no cool walks, that God didn't tell them about the serpent. That God didn't tell them about Satan. Evidently, or they would have been watching for him. Amen. I was thinking about that. So evidently, they didn't realize they have an adversary. Hallelujah. Mm. Remember, it wasn't until Satan entered into Jesus when Jesus messed up they intensified. Amen. That, that, that Judas spent three years with Jesus. He called him a friend, amen? But it wasn't until Satan 
enter into Judas when Jesus messed up day became intensified. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you with me? So in other words, when mess arises, that the best of friends can become the worst of enemies. Amen. When mess arises. Amen. So get rid of the snakes in your life. Hallelujah. So not following God's instruction, not knowing you have an adversary can mess you every day. The other thing is having a conversation with the devil can cause you a messed up day. Having a conversation with the devil can cause you a messed up day. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and tell, tell it. I went I, I, to my church. I used to have, I have this lady come to my church, and she, she was always telling me. She said, Pastor, you couldn't wait, almost like, like you couldn't wait to get to church to tell me what the devil said. Candace, she would tell me what the devil said. And I would try to comfort her, Pastor Mickey, and, and try to figure it out with her. She, she, every Sunday was doing that until I got tired of it. And I say, sister, don't tell me what the devil said. Tell me what God said. I want to hear what God said. So evidently, she kept talking to the devil because she didn't show up no more. Amen. So keep your conversation with the devil short or none of all. The devil don't talk to me. Mm -mm. The devil don't talk to me. I got three things. I got three senses for the devil. First time, he don't have to say nothing, but I just remind him he's a liar. Now, he, he, he ain't got to say nothing. The devil, you are a liar. So I remind him of that. He don't talk to me much. The, 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 the second thing, when he do begin to talk, I say, get thee behind me, Satan. Keep your conversation with the devil short. Get thee behind me, Satan. Then when he tries to turn the heat up on me, I say, I say, Satan, the blood is against you. The blood is against you. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. He don't talk to me much. I ain't got but three things to say to the devil. Amen. So keep your conversation with the devil short. You hear me? Amen. Hallelujah. You, 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 do, do you have that quote from Tony, Dr. Tony Evans? I was reading Dr. Tony. He got this beautiful Bible out. Tony Evans says this here. And then I, I thank Brother Elijah and Joyce back there. I walked in late and I tried to give them stuff. And they, they accommodate me, but I'm trying try to do better. They're doing a great job back there. But anyway, Tony Evans says this here. He said, while Christians cannot be possessed by the devil, they can be under satanic influence so that the devil is the dominant one prompting their decision. Did you get that? While Christians cannot be possessed by the devil, they can be under satanic influence so that the devil is the dominant one prompting their decision making. Hmm. You get it? Want me to say it again for real? Okay, I'll say it again. Slowly. Dr. Tony Evans says this. While Christians cannot be possessed by the devil, they can be under satanic influence so that the devil is the dominant one prompting their decision making. And he only has two classic lies, and he uses it on Eve. Two classic lies. First classic lie, this is Tony Evans saying, that sin carries no consequences. He's telling that in Genesis 3 and 4. He said, you should not surely die. Every sin has consequences. No sin goes unpunished. Amen. The second class of lie is that, that humans can be equal with God. In verse, three, in, in, in verse 5, he said, you should, God knows you can be like God. So it's a class of lies that sin doesn't go unpunished and that you as a human can be like God. Amen. Keep your conversation with the devil short and put him back in his place. Mm. In fact, why would you continue to have a conversation with anyone that don't have the ability to tell the truth? Why would you continue to have a conversation with someone that doesn't have the ability to tell the truth? You're just like your father, the Satan. You're just like your father, the devil, and the truth is not in you. Let me help you. How can you tell you have a conversation with the devil? Anybody want to know? How can you tell you have a conversation? Do you really want to, you want to know, Becky? How can you tell you have a conversation with the devil? Let me help you out. If Jesus is not being lifted up, it's probably messy. Okay? If Jesus is not being lifted up in the conversation, it probably can get messy. The second, if, there's, if they are saying things opposite of what God has spoken, you know it's the devil. If they're saying things opposite of what God has spoken, it's the devil. Amen? If the conversation leading more towards pleasing yourself than pleasing God, it's probably going to get messy. Amen? Amen. Do you hear that? If the lead, conversation leading more towards pleasing yourself than pleasing God, it's probably going to get messy. Amen? Yeah. 
So how to avoid having a messed up day? Although the world is messy, you don't have to be messy with it. You with me? Although the world, man, you don't have to be messy with it. Hmm. Like I said, you, you, you don't get through life without having some messed up day. Through no fault of your own, through no fault of your own, mess was going to come your way. I reminded of 9-11. I'm not going to go there, but 9-11 messed up everybody's day. It wasn't no fault of your own, but everybody they got messed up on 9-11. You remember that? Hmm. Sometimes when you are surrounded by goodness, you tend to get comfortable and relax, right? The garden, it was good. It was beautiful. They was relaxed. So we got to stay on your P's and Q's, amen? Remember before the fall, before the disobedience, before things were messed up, that everything was good. Everything was very good, very good. And a mess can happen in beautiful and sacred places. You, you see that, right? A mess can happen in beautiful and sacred places. It happened in the Garden of Eden, a beautiful place that God has created. Happened in the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus would retreat and go and pray. Mess come in. It happened in heaven. There was a war in heaven. You see, remember that? There was a war in heaven, and Michael and the archangels had, had to fight against, against uh, Lucifer and put him and two thirds of the angels out. So a mess can happen in some of the most sacred places. Barbara and I find that mess happens either behind the scenes or in front at a wedding. A wedding can't get messy. What's she doing here? Who invited him? She knows she can't be wearing white. A mess can happen at a wedding. A mess can happen at a funeral. So the most sacred, you, you try to just have a celebration. Here comes a mess. Hmm. One messed up day. Your goal is not to make it messier than what it is. That you trust the Lord to clean it up. Amen. You trust the Lord to clean it up and to clear it up. How to avoid a, mess, a messed up day? You walk away from mess. When you see mess coming, just walk away from it. You ain't got to be all the way in it. You see mess, oh, Barb and I, we don't... We ain't perfect, but we know when we see mess, and we walk away from mess. Now, I'm going to mess with some of you. You want to avoid a mess up day? Hang up the hell old phone. Hang up the hell old phone. <laughs> Amen. Our problem is that we know it's messy, and we keep wanting to hear I want to hear it. You know it's messy. Hang up the hell old phone. You can avoid some mess. Amen. Hallelujah. And then really get messy, you run like Joseph. Amen? You run like Joseph. You leave your jacket, but you take your wallet and run like Joseph. Amen? Leave your jacket, but take your wallet and run like Joseph ran. Amen? Proverbs 3, 5, 6 says this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. How to avoid a messed up day? Control your appetite for worldly things. Amen? Amen. How, to, how to avoid a messed up day? Limit worldly influences in your life. Amen? Amen? You want to avoid having a messed up day? You make being a Christian a lifestyle and not just something you do. You make being a Christian a lifestyle. You can avoid a messed up day. It's not just something you do. Amen? First John 2 says this here. First John 2, 15. Love not the world. Neither thing that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is what? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. It's not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passes away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God, hallelujah, lasts forever. So not controlling your lustful desire, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life guarantees you a messed up day. Hallelujah. You can't be messy. Listen to me. You cannot be messy and bear the image and the likeness of God in Christ. You can't do it. You cannot be messy and bear the image and, the mess and, and, and bear the image and the likeness of God in Christ. Amen. Adam lost the image once he sinned. Once he fell, he lost the image. He kept the likeness, but he lost the image. How do you, you know that, Pastor? I see it because it says in in Genesis 5 and 3, of course, he had Cain and Abel, 
before, but in Genesis 5, 3, it says, Adam lived 130 years old and begot his, and, and begot his son in, in his likeness after his image and called his name Seth. That's why the scriptures say that, that we were born into sin, shaping into iniquity because of the mess. But thank God for Jesus. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. So let, let's finish with, with the first Adam. So, so turn your messed up day into a victorious day. First of all, you got to confess. You confess. All that they tried to transfer the blame, and even they're going for is blaming God. The woman that you gave me, the serpent that you made, but they did not deny eating the fruit. So confess that thing. First John 1 and I say, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you all your sins and, and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Turn your messed up day into a victorious day because when you confess your thing, you step on the devil's head. Amen? Amen? You don't have to live in that lie anymore. Amen? Amen? That you set yourself free. You step on the devil's head. So first of all, you confess it. Amen. I messed up. Yeah. But Lord, forgive me. Yeah. Amen? Brother, sister, forgive me. Yeah, I messed up. I didn't mean to. I messed up. Forgive me. Yeah. You confess it. The second thing that, that I love about it, that, that, that God come looking for Adam in the middle of his mess. God will come looking for you in the middle of your mess. God's going to come looking for you, and you let God find you. You let God find you. God come looking for you in the middle of your mess. God gives them the free will to make the choices of right or wrong when they mess up, but he come looking for them. Amen? That reminds me of Romans 8, 5. Who can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus? Amen. In fact, the two best demonstrations of, of Jesus' love for us is that when God, when God loved for us and Jesus loved, that when God come looking for Adam, that's showing his love. Amen. Amen. He didn't come looking just to punish him, but he comes to back to restore. Amen. Amen. And then it says in, in Romans 5 that while we were yet sinners, Christ to, to demonstrate his love for us. That Jesus died, amen? That's the two greatest examples of God's love. When he comes looking for Adam and when Jesus dies on the cross, amen? Hallelujah. The third thing to turn your message into a victorious day, allow God to cover you, amen? Allow God to cover you. Although they hid, they did not run from God. They allowed God to restore them. They allowed God, they allowed God to restore them. Although they felt like it was all over. God might have to sit you down and restore you, but it's not over, amen? amen? So allow God to cover you, allow God to find you, God come looking for you, and then they reconcile with each other, amen? They reconcile with each other. How do I know that? It says Adam knew his wife. They, they never allowed the devil to deceive them anymore or come between them and God anymore. You don't see it anymore. In fact, they, they went on to do what God said, be fruitful and multiply is what they did. They, didn't, uh, but they didn't, did not allow their marriage to continue to be messy. Don't allow your marriage to continue to be messy. Amen? Reconcile with each other. Then they learn, they learn from their mistake. They learn from their mess up. And, and how, how do you know that, Mike? I, I know that because you, you, you don't see them plotting Pastor Mickey on trying to sneak back in to get some rose fruit. Because God put them out the garden. He put a, a, a swimming... A, a, a flaming sword, you know, but they're going back and forth in cherubim. So you don't, you don't see them trying to plot and say, you, 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 you distract the cherubim over here while I sneak up under and, and go get some more. You, you, you don't see them doing that. They learn from their mistakes, amen. You, you know how we do. We return to our own mess, you know. We turn to our, like a dog, we turn to our own vomit. But you don't see them, you, you, you see them learning from their mistakes. They never allow the devil to come between them again, Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm almost there, guys. So let's talk about the second Adam. Amen. The second Adam, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Amen. The Savior of the world. Jesus had a one messed up day. Jesus had one messed up day. But Jesus' messed up day turned triumphant victory for the world. Amen. So what caused Jesus' messed up day? Jesus' messed up day was not caused by Satan. Jesus' messed up day was not triggered by Satan's three tactics of temptation, the lust of the eye, 
lust of the flesh or the pride of life, because Jesus had a word for me. He said, it is written. When he said the lust of the eye, he said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out the mouth of the God. The lust of the flesh, he said, you should not tempt the Lord your God. On the pride of life thing, I love it. He said, away with thee, Satan. Jesus kept his conversation with Satan short. Away with you, Satan. Worship, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only, amen. amen. Although Satan tried to tempt him with those three things in the wilderness, he hit him with the word of God, amen. Jesus messed up day, didn't start in the garden against sin me, like the garden of Eden. No, Jesus messed up day was planned by God. Jesus messed day was planned by God before the foundation of the world, amen. We see it right there in Ephesians 1, 4, according that he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Oh, I love that verse. I love that verse. Before the foundation of the world, you was already chosen. Hallelujah. Before you got into the mess you was, that you're in, you were chosen. Before Adam fell, you were chosen. Before Eve took the first bite or her first look at the fruit, you were chosen. Before Satan spoke a word, you were chosen. Can I take it back again? John 1 and 1 said, in the beginning was the word. Hallelujah. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was with God in the beginning. All things that was made was made that was nothing that were made by him and without him was not anything made. In verse 14, and the word became flesh and, drunk to, and, and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So through 42 generations of mess, if you read gen, Jesus' genealogy, you're going to see some messy folks up in there. Amen? It's a mess in there. But through 42 generations of mess, the second Adam come to clean up what the first Adam messed up. Amen. When they drove the nails in his hand, that was messed up. When they drove the nails in his feet, that was messed up. Yeah. When they put the thorns of crown and drove it in the skull, that was messed up. But the most messed up part for Christ on that day, when he took his last breath, when he said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? That was his most, to, to be separated for that momentary separation from God. That was messed up. Hallelujah. Genesis, I'm sorry, not, not Genesis. Isaiah 53, he's going to bring the scriptures up. Now, this is the interactive part. My sister-in-law, Ann, is over there. Ann always had this saying, long time ago, always had this saying, when somebody do somebody wrong, or when somebody just do something dirty, she called it dirty, or just, just, just do something that was stupid to somebody for no cause, she says, that's messed up. That's what she always said, that's messed up. So she, she's right there. So I need y'all to help me in practice saying, that's messed up. All you got to say it out, that's messed up. I'm going I'm to tell you when to say it, all right? I need, to say, I, need, I need you to say it loud. Let's walk Isaiah 53, we're going to get ready to get done, all right? That's messed up. Isaiah 53, verse 2 said, he had no form or countenance talking about Jesus. The, the, the messed up thing about this, that before Jesus is even born, the mess is already there. Before he's even born. Now somebody said, that's messed up. The messed up day is planned before he's born. That's messed up. So, so let, let, let's do it real quick. He said, he has no form of countenance, and when we should see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. That's he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. That's what? Surely he borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet, yet we did, did esteem him stricken, by, stricken and smitten by God and afflicted. That's what? That's messed up. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of his peace, our peace was up on him. That's what? But somebody praised God because by his stripes, by his stripes, 
by his stripes we are healed. As we like sheep has been gone astray, we have turned everyone his own way, and the Lord has laid out on him the iniquity of us all. That's what? That's messed up. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he opened up now his mouth. He was led to the, the lamb to the slaughter, as sure as to the dumb. That's what? That's messed up. He was taken from prison to judgment, for he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. That's what? That's messed up. And he was made, made his grave with the wicked. Beautiful Jesus. Made his grave with the wicked. Because he had done no violence, neither shall any deceit was in his mouth. That's messed up. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him and to put our grief upon him. Because he had poured out his soul unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. He's numbered with the transgressors. A beautiful Jesus, the child of God, the baby Jesus, numbered with the transgressors. That's what? Messed up. But he turns a messed up day. Oh, somebody give him God glory. Thank God that the second Adam, that God, that, 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 that got us out of the mess that we was in. Oh, give him glory, give him glory. He went through some mess, but he got us out of the mess that we was in. Could Jesus mess been avoided? Nah. Unlike Adam messed up day, which could have been avoided, the second Adam had to go through the mess to redeem us. Amen. Hallelujah. He paid the price. He purchased us. Amen. Although he asked, Lord, if there's any other way, there's no other way. So if you're in some mess, don't worry. God sees the mess that you're in. God sees the mess that you're going through. He's going to get you out of that mess. So Jesus turned a messed up day, and I'm, I'm, I'm closing now. Jesus turned his messed up day into a victorious day. It was a bloody and messed up cross. It was a bloody and messy cross, but it led to a victorious day. It was a bloody and messy cross, but it led to a glorious new beginning. If any man be in Christ, hallelujah, he is a new creature. Jesus give us back what Adam lost. Hallelujah. Jesus give us back what Adam lost. Jesus give us back the image of God. Amen. That when, when God look at you, he see his son. Amen. When God look at you now, since you're a believer, he see his son. He see his image in you. Amen. Jesus give us back what Adam lost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What Jesus did on the cross means that you don't have to die in your sin. You hear me? What Jesus did on the cross means you don't have to die in your sins. You don't have to remain in the mess. It was a messed up day, but it was glorious victory over sin and death in the grave. Amen? It was a messed up day, but it gave us eternal life. It's a messed up day, but we got eternal life with the Lord. Hallelujah. One messed up day turned to victory for us. Victory for you. Have you received in the day? Is Christ your Lord? Are you in any mess right now? If you're in some mess, how do you get in that mess? How do you get out of that mess? I got saved as I was 10. Sister Gina, when I was 10, I knew I was saved. Little kids sitting in front, know I was saved. Knew I was going to heaven. But didn't know nothing about walking with God. Somebody discipled me. So as a teenager, I did it all. You name it, I did it. Drunk. Chasing. You name it, I, I was messed up. I had a messed up, not just a messed up day, but a messed up life. I was saved. But I wasn't changed. I was saved, but I wasn't transformed. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is the good and perfect will of God. You don't have to stay in some mess. And you don't have to be messy. He set you free. Are you free? I know it's a mess. The world is messed up. It's going to get messier and messier. 
I was reading something the other day. You know, all, all this stuff and politics and all this stuff that's going on. One thing about abortion, I, I, and I said, God's grace. God's grace. If you had to go through that tragedy you know, of abortion, that God's grace. God is just. But out in California, that, that, there's this lady. Since the Supreme Court started this thing about abortion, this lady, she wanted to start, she started, they call it a church, look, look it up, the, the Church of Potential Life. The Church of Potential Life. And the premise of the church is, is that they worship abortion. Hmm. You're talking about mess. It's mess. The world is mess. There, every day there's something new. There's a new mess coming in. How do you keep yourself from the mess? Keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Amen. Stand, stand, stand to your feet. If you need prayer, you can come. If you're in the mess and it's got you entangled, if you're in the mess that got you entangled, you can come. We can pray and Lord release you from that. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace, Lord. We thank you for that one messed up day in the garden that, that, that you didn't de destroy Adam, but you restored them. You covered the sins, oh Lord. And you covered our sin when you sent Christ, oh Lord. That through the blood of the Lamb, we are now washed white as snow. Our sins are forgiven. That you got us out of the mess that we was in. And you're giving us freedom in you, oh Lord. Not only freedom, Lord, but a promise assume all the mess will be over because there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. So we thank you for the promise, God. Thank you for your love. Oh, that was messed up. That's messed up. But glory, glory, hallelujah. We'll see you soon. In the name of Jesus.